And now back to the increase in price of uh, passport procurement in Algeria. To discuss more on this, we're joined by an associate professor of public law, River State University, Professor Richard Nwokoche. Thank you so much, Professor, for joining us. All right, now... Um, Thank you for having me. Good it's a pleasure. Here. Thank you for joining us on the news. Now, what are your thoughts on the legality of the Nigerian government's decision to increase passport fees without consultation or without legislative approval? Well, um, passport fees are administrative issues. And so, um, administratively, it will be fixed by those who have authority to fix it. And that will not be legislative. That is executive business. So I think when it comes to whether or not the federal government has power to increase the fees, yes, the power is there. Uh, what we may, however, question is how reasonable it is to do that at this moment. Uh, as, but for the power, the legality of doing so, it is an executive responsibility. Okay, but I mean, we understand that very well, but how does this um, align with the principles of transparency and accountability in public administration, particularly in light of the government's claims of commitment to these values? Because one would expect that there would be a prior information before um, the price skyrockets. You don't expect to just wake up and see that the price of passport has gone from 30K to 50K in the case of five years and then 70K to 100K in the case for... Um, 10 years. Yeah, that's where the uh, problem of responsiveness of government comes in. Uh, earlier, I did refer to the fact that, yes, it, it is a legal thing to do, but not a reasonable thing to do at the time. You know, the country has just come out from a protest in which citizens, we are saying, cost of living is becoming unbearable and uh, the hardship is becoming unbearable. Uh, I think it would be insensitive at this time for government to take steps increasing the hardship instead of reducing. Yes, we know the um, uh, minimum income age winner may not be going for passport, but it is right. Under Section 41 of the Constitution, every citizen has a right to leave the country and to come in when he likes. So when things like passport, which are domestic property are made so expensive that an average citizen cannot attain them. Uh, it means that you are shutting them out from being able to exercise their freedom of movement uh, in and out of the country under Section 41 of the Constitution. So I think the timing is reasonable. As for transparency, um, if it is legal, we cannot question the issue of transparency, but it will be unreasonable in that sensitization should have taken place. And in any case, the timing is generally wrong because this is a time when Nigerians are calling for things to be reduced, not time for things to be increased. So a responsive government will usually have taken steps, take it beyond this time, take it to a time when you have done some things to assuage the feelings of the people, and then you sensitize them on the need to increase it if it is necessary before you take such steps. So for me, it is irresponsiveness uh, on the part of government. So now it's it's not even a debate that um, this decision, which reflects on the government's obligations to its citizens um, under international human rights, uh, has affected or is going to affect the low income individuals, like you rightly said. I mean, every citizen, yeah. just as you mentioned, has the right to leave the country and come back whenever they want. But it's like there, we've said it over and over again, that there is no no more middle class in Nigeria. It's either you're rich or you're poor. And this just goes further to show that. So is there any legal action that can come out of this? Maybe um, the low or middle income earners can take this up in any way or form. Is there any constitution that backs it up? Because it, in a way, it's infringing on the rights of the people. I agree. Um... I am afraid because it is done by the appropriate authority uh, and within the powers vested on that authority by the law, it may be difficult to challenge it in court. But there are social responses that people can uh, approach to. People can um, resort to calling on their representatives to prevail on the government to bring it down. Uh, people can resort to the social means of speaking out against it and uh, last means is protesting against it, which is within their right. Uh, but, you know, we have just come out from one. 
uh, in all, it is un an unreasonable action to take at this moment. Uh, people cannot resort to legal action because the action is taken by the appropriate authority and within the powers granted to regulate uh, immigration and immigration. So I'm afraid uh, we may not be able to seek that by legal action. Uh, that's not to say that we cannot try uh, to get the cost to uh, look perhaps at a minimum wage and all of that and uh, argue that it's unreasonable. But uh, beyond that, I am afraid it's something we can pursue socially and through our political representatives. All right, uh, Associate Professor of Public Laws, River State University, Professor Richard Wonkocha, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your thoughts um, on the news at this hour.